And for more on our top story, we're joined by the Chief Minister now in the studio. Good evening, Mr Picardo. Now, uh, the virus is surging everywhere and we saw the start of the spike in Gibraltar at the beginning of the week. We've had the Director of Public Health, Dr Sahal Bharti, warn that people's behaviour will need to change. So can you explain why has it taken until the end of the week with barely three hours' notice for these restrictions to be announced? So if you look at the numbers of cases of COVID that we've been reporting, we've been blessed to be reporting very low numbers until really the beginning of this week when we started to see the numbers come back up. This is the fourth day of double-digit numbers of growth, now 31 cases, this morning 31 cases, one of the highest numbers we've reported for many weeks now of new cases of COVID-19. So look, unfortunately we were faced with a difficult decision this morning. What was put to me was that the choice really was as stark as this. We either made the decision to close our catering establishments tonight in the way that we have, or we were facing a full total national lockdown after Christmas, if we manage to get to Christmas before full national lockdown. So those are invidious decisions to have to make. The decision we made is the one that we think is the best of those two options, so that our catering establish can, establishments can continue to be open during the day for the next few days, but close at 7 p.m. at night instead of continuing to be open through the night. 2020 is the gift that keeps on giving. It is a difficult year that is only going to get harder before we get to the 31st of December and then the very early part of 2021 will be just as difficult. We have to understand that. These are not decisions that we've made because we want to make them. So restaurants are closing at 7pm where tables of eight were permitted yet gatherings of up to 16 are allowed in private dwellings. Can you explain the logic, please, behind that? There is no logic to explain. We may have to also take measures in coming days to restrict the number of people who can gather and to bring down the number of people who can sit at tables. We are trying not to. We are trying to resist having to do that. As we get towards the Christmas break, we want in so far as possible not to become involved in how people can gather and ask them to gather in the numbers that are permitted, but with care so that they don't become vectors for the infection to their loved ones or receive infection from their loved ones. So that's why we haven't yet taken those steps, but we may have to take those steps. And holding on and not taking the steps until we have to is not a vice. It is a virtue. We're doing what we have to do when we have to do it, and we're not doing more unless we have the specific advice that we must. How long are these uh, restrictions expected to remain in place? What is the threshold for easing them? So the only thing I can tell you is that at the moment we anticipate they will be with us through the holiday period, and that it is very unlikely that we'll be seeing catering establishments able to open in effect for dinner until well into January. I do recognise that having done this at such a you know, quick um, at such a quick pace is going to have caused greater difficulties for catering establishments that are already suffering. The Gibraltar Catering Association was making representations to us already before these eventualities. We will be working with them to put in place a package of additional measures because of today. I recognise that Christmas is when they make most of their festive earnings, which then see them through the early part of the year. But we will only be ensuring that we provide additional compensation to those businesses that have followed all of the rules.